Hello, and welcome once again to our service this morning. It feels a little weird being in front of you today. Normally, I get to hide somewhat behind the piano or the bass guitar. And even though I've been around for a few months, I haven't met, I haven't had a chance to meet most of you. And while you have seen me in the service before, I haven't done much talking. By this point, I hope that you would know that my name is Aaron, and that I have been covering the position of worship arts pastor for, while Stephanie was on her sabbatical. Now that Stephanie is returning, I will be staying in that role while she takes on the responsibilities of lead pastor while Tyler is on his sabbatical. Years ago, when I was working at a different church here in Edmonton, we would often ask a particular member of the congregation to give the message on Sundays when the pastor was away. While he almost always agreed, he would make it very clear that he wasn't giving a sermon or preaching, specifically because he wasn't a pastor. Just that he wanted to share some things that he had been thinking about and wrestling with in the context of the church. I would like to do something similar here. Though I am currently in the role of a pastor, my talk today will be less of a traditional sermon and more of a reflection um, on the past year and how technology has both enhanced and hindered community in a church context. Psalm 133 says, How good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life forevermore. As an Aaron with a beard, I can tell you that a properly groomed and oiled beard is wonderful. That's not particularly relevant to anything else I'm going to say today, but I wanted to make sure that it got said. More seriously, though, this psalm presents an image of blessings pouring down and the unity of God's people being those blessings. This past year has been a tough one. Much of our day-to-day -day lives has had to change due to the COVID-19 pandemic that we're still wrestling with. So how do we go about being, remaining in, or growing our community when it's unwise and potentially dangerous to meet face to face? How much does community depend on physical presence? And can we make community work in this digital time full of video chats and Zoom meetings and live streams? Before COVID, many churches had a tenuous relationship with technology. Some, such as Greenfield, have a general embrace of technology. We have no issues using a computer and a projector, multiple projectors, in fact, to show song lyrics, to show the name and purpose of whoever is speaking, slides to follow along with the sermon, and whatever else that might come up. I know some other churches that have no projectors in the service, and would feel very uncomfortable and probably be actively resisting adding those to their service. I've got a lot of books and even took a few classes on this interaction of technology with theology. Um, don't worry, I won't really go into that on a deep level. It's, that's much more academic. Um, and most of the time, these books argue for a cautious position, weighing the benefits of using technology against the unknown dangers of mediating our interactions through the screen. Sometimes, these are small questions, like wondering if we show the lyrics of a song, will that lead to the congregation not being able to read music out of the hymnal? And is that something we should be worrying about? Others are larger questions, such as if church is presented like a TV show, broadcast on TV or on the internet and live streaming in this or similar form, how do we avoid 
becoming merely spiritual entertainment. This past year, however, has forced a larger level of technology into our churches, whether we wanted it or not. Churches as varied as they come now live stream their Sunday morning service to YouTube or other platforms. Many have taken to having a congregation-wide Zoom meeting as their service. Folk that you might have thought to be, in the staunchest, to be the staunchest opponent to additional technology in the church now have working knowledge on how to run a Zoom meeting, or at least how to participate. The unfortunate part of this is that in the immediacy of to make sure that the various services of the church were still able to be provided, we didn't have much time to wrestle with many of those valid cautions that the books and classes I mentioned brought up. Now, don't get me wrong, even in my short time here at Greenfield, I've seen many excellent ways that Greenfield is working at keeping community. But I would still like to work through some of those questions and cautions with you this morning. The first concern is disconnection. This is some sort of the obvious danger, that without the routine of getting up, getting ready, leaving the house, and physically being around the people in the community, that we start to feel like we're not part of the community. We try to mitigate this and lessen the effect by broadcasting the service live as it happens, rather than pre-recording it and just sending out a video. Um, the Care and Connect time over Zoom after the service is another way that we try to keep the community there, even when we're all separate. But even with these measures, we still struggle to build and maintain connections between people. There isn't much that adequately replaces being face-to-face -face and sitting down to chat about life. Due to this current situation, I have met very few of you. If you haven't been part of leading a service since January, it's unlikely that we've spoken directly. It's a very odd position for me to be in. Here I am, helping to organize and grow a community that I don't really know. And I'm not sure that that will change before my time at Greenfield comes to an end. That being said, I'm incredibly grateful to the staff and the people I have met for their support and community. And I can tell from those interactions that Greenfield is a church that strives to be a supportive community, wanting to help those they are connected with. Coming back to technology and the concern of disconnection, I think there is honestly a risk of being disconnected. The best live stream possible still falls short of the feeling of being together. I think we have to admit, though I don't think I've actually heard anyone trying to deny this, that on their own, technological solutions to community, live streaming, Zoom, those types of things, cannot wholly accomplish what gathering together can. However, in this time when gathering is unwise and possibly dangerous, the risk of some people disconnecting is kind of a risk that, is, that we are forced to accept so that the community can still have some connection. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. It is my belief that it is how the community of believers, the capital C Church, act as community that's, that God's love is best shown to the rest of the world. Putting the work into continuing being to, to putting the work into continue being involved into each other's lives digitally through YouTube and Zoom and other programs won't give perfect 
results, but they will be so much more effective than doing nothing. Additionally, using these tools removes some of the bar former barriers to community. I haven't personally looked at any of the analytics from our YouTube channel, but the fact that we are live streaming our service means that people who would otherwise not be able to join with us, particularly those who live too far away, can still attend and have the basis for some connection that wasn't there before. While obviously not ideal and presenting its own set of challenges, it also brings opportunities that otherwise would never have come about. The second concern I want to mention is a little more subtle, and it has to do with how we communicate. The tools we use to communicate greatly affect how we communicate. This has to do with the, the limitations of the technology and the tools being used. And this isn't a new thing. It's happened with every new method of communication. Telegraphs are written differently than letters. You cannot use hand gestures over the phone. And sarcasm is notoriously difficult to convey in any form of text. For our Sunday services, streaming allows people to join us from their homes, but only as an observer. There are very few times that someone watching on YouTube can influence the service directly. Especially in this time when we are not having any in-person attendance, that technological break makes it more difficult to draw the line between running a service and performance. Alternatively, using Zoom as a way to retain the feeling of mingling in the foyer after the service is a struggle. No matter how many people join in a Zoom meeting, there's only one person talking at a time, until, unless it gets confusing, and only one conversation happening at a time. You're not able to drift between groups or, you know, walk by and quickly wave and say hello as you're moving to a different area. The more we use these mediums, the more we get used to the method of communication. And I wonder what the longer term effects will be when we do eventually return to the way we had been meeting before all this. For most adults, I think, we'll probably return with a sense of relief that finally we can communicate in a way that we like. We can stand there, we can talk to this person, we can be like, oh, right, I need to get water, go over here, and then talk to this group of people. But I'm not sure, I'm not certain about our youth and children. Perhaps nothing will come of it, but I can't help but think that a year of learning how to interact with people mostly through a screen will change how they interact with people in person. And that's a struggle that we'll have to deal with as it comes up, and we don't know what that effect will be. Technology also gives each individual more control over their level of involvement and connection. Do you want to attend church while lying in bed with your pajamas on? You can do that now. Do you want to wash dishes, vacuum, clean your house, or anything else while you have church streaming on YouTube? We can't stop you. <laughs> Didn't want to shower or get dressed before joining the Zoom prayer meeting? You have the choice of turning your video off. Personally, I've always I've never really liked phone calls. I'm much more the texting person. And one of the reasons for that is that with texts or emails, I have more control on my response. If a question gets asked, I can find out the answer before replying. If the message is awkward or problematic, 
I can ignore it and maybe avoid the need to deal with whatever it was. Again, I, I don't mean to paint this only in a negative light, but just to bring it forward as things to think about and what the effects might be down the road. The strangeness of the past year has forced us to look for alternative ways to grow and maintain community. It has changed how we interact with people and with the church, and I do think that the use of technology has been an overall positive thing. And we certainly can't ignore the potential unique benefits that new technologies offer. However, we also can't overlook the potential risks and changes that are inherent to an extended time of exclusive use. The medium is the message, is a phrase that a Canadian sociologist and philosopher has used before to mean that many of these methods of communication change the information that comes through. That it's not only the content, but it's how we, how we present it. It's how it's being transmitted that, great, that has a stronger effect, in his opinion, than the content itself. Thankfully, we aren't completely bound forever to only using YouTube or Zoom to be in community. Eventually, this pandemic will be over, or controlled, and we will be able to meet together physically again. This gives us an amazing opportunity to tailor our technology usage to the needs of this community. At that time, we will be able to have the best of both worlds. Face-to-face -face communi community for people who are, who are able to join us, as well as a farther-reaching digital community interaction for people who are unable to be here in person. We are now more confident and competent with the tools needed to extend our community outside the people who show up on Sunday morning. This could be people from farther away who would, or people who would normally join but are unable due to illness or other factors. In the meantime, though, we are still limited to what we can accomplish through these technologies. And I would encourage everyone to examine their feeling of community. Be honest with yourself. How are you doing? Are you doing well? Do you feel well-connected? Or do you feel disconnected, lonely? We recognize that digital community isn't ideal as the only option, but there still may be things that we can do or are already doing to help. The Care and Connect time is a great place to see the faces of others in the church and have a chance to interact. As much as I don't normally like phone calls, I've found that a regular phone call just to chat with a friend can be incredibly helpful. If you are finding yourself feeling separated from the community, please let us know. It's unfortunately very difficult to tell if people are doing well or not when the normal level of involvement is watching YouTube. I know that can be difficult to reach out when you're feeling disconnected, but sadly, that's the only way that we're going to know. If nothing else, I would encourage people to join the Care and Connect time on Zoom. I know it isn't ideal, but having some interaction is still better than only watching passively if you're feeling separated. As a community and as the people of God, we want to help people thrive and be healthy. Greenfield's mission statement is that we are a community of Christ followers, joining God on mission and growing in our love for God, neighbors, and one another. Helping each other in times of struggle is part of that. Please, 
reach out to each other, to the pastoral staff, to friends, if you're feeling isolated. And on the flip side, if you haven't heard from friends or members of the community that you would normally spend time with, I encourage you to reach out to them and check in and chat. Sometimes being in community comes easy. And other times, it takes some work. This is one of those times that takes effort. We have at our disposal a bunch of technology that can help, even though it's not as ideal as we would wish. It does take some work, but using what we have access to as best we can is really the only way to hold strong to community. Please pray with me. Father God, we come before you as a community, but as a community separated. Father, would you help us stay cohesive? Would you help us recognize when others in our community are feeling isolated? Lord, would you prompt us to reach out to those that we may not have heard from for a while. Lord, give strength to those who are feeling isolated. Father, know, let them know that you are near and that this community is near. Lord, help us all as we go through these weird times of being together but not being together. Would you bless this community? Would you continue to grow and expand the reach and the impact within and outside of this specific group of people? Lord, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Thank you.